first of all, um, if you didn't, if you're not on Facebook, because everyone who's a Facebook user shared this last week, SNL Saturday Night Live uh -huh. did a skit on Ticket to Ride. Well, using Ticket to Ride as a prop, they basically were Jumanjiing Ticket to Ride, and I won't ruin the rest of the skit. What does that for mean, Jumanjiing Ticket to Ride? That's that's the that's precisely the point of the skit. Was what does that mean? Do you know what Jumanji is? I do. I don't understand how that. Just, yeah, you got to watch the skit. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to ruin it for you. Just tell me about it. Um, I don't really watch SNL. By that I mean I don't. This watch is SNL. a this is a good skit. I, I thought it was. Pretty I thought it was good. very funny. It was yeah. very funny. I I am amused though, at the number of board gamers, who got into a, a, a just kind of a, a upset because they're like, Ticket to Ride is not six players. <laughs> a, oh really? Who cares? <laughs> and B. He, he says at the very beginning of the game, he's like, I've never played this game. So how would right. he know? Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah, there's six people sitting at the table, and that was the big stink uh, <laughs> of gamers everywhere. It's like, just be happy they featured Ticket to Ride. That's neat. That's right, really yeah, cool. exposure. Come on. Calm down, people. Alrighty. Let's talk about some games. Scrabble, a new version of Scrabble is coming yes. out. From what I understand, this is going to be on the other side of the board. I think the the new the regular version is on the one side. I think. Anyway, this is a new um, cooperative Scrabble, and um, right. you're gonna you have to put stuff next to the board, and you have these goals that you're trying to get to. Um, yes, it is a double sided board. So one side is a standard board, the other one is the new one. It has spaces, and you're trying to. You have to get these goal cards, uh, but you can also play competitively. The first person to get 20 challenges is the winner. And there's still most of the rules for Scrabble. Now, I think this is fantastic. I think mm -hmm. this is a good thing because why not? I mean, hey, if you yeah. do, if you're like, hey, they should mess with Scrabble. Well, guess what? You can still buy Scrabble. I do like that also. it is Scrabble on the one side. You can do that if you're yeah. if that's what you're into. And there's a little variant, kind of like another edition of the game on the other side. That's wonderful. Absolutely. Mm. There's different ways to play. I understand they made it kind of easier to approach this side. It's, you know, again, cooperative and the, the just the ease of entry has been lowered so that that competitive nature of the game Goes away a little bit. Great way to get into board gaming this way. It's really interesting, yeah. But the tiles, those tiles look plastic. They don't look wooden, yeah. It looks like a rendering, though, right? Not an yeah, actual. That's true so, too. I mean, who knows? Yeah, I just wonder if that's what it's going to look like because they would, you could still render the traditional Scrabble tiles of those true. little brown ones. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, this mm. is cool. All right, well, Steamboat Willie is now in public domain. What? So let's make some games about it. Mm -hmm. I would be very cautious to be the first publisher Oof. to do this, right? Because I don't want to be the one Disney talks to. I also think if you're going to use Steamboat Willie in a game, I'd prefer you to like, do it in a game that exists, like an unmatched deck for oh, Steamboat right. Willie. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Something yeah. that's part of a game. This, well, this looks like a whole mess. This looks like this the very does, definition this. of cash grab. There's yeah. three different fonts there very quickly. Four, I'm sorry. I forgot. I didn't see the, the Simply, Simply Play, Play games. games. Is that the company? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> this looks awful. Yeah, I can't tell I don't know anything it. about this, but if this is meant to be a promotional image that they put together... This looks like a, a passion project Kickstarter, but it's not a passion project. It's Steamboat Willie, and it's not a Kickstarter. Well, like, it you know is, what I mean? It is going to be crowdfunded in May. Oh, okay. All right. Um, they're going to return to the Forbidden Seas. Forbidden Seas? It says Dark Seas right there. Epic two to four player game. You need to rescue Caroline Epic. the cow. She needs to get aboard the steamboat to safety. Um, okay. So the way this works with IP is just because Steamboat Willie is public domain does not mean everything Mickey Mouse is. So they have to be very careful to use yep. only stuff that was in that one short. That's right. Wow. Or other stuff that you make up. What is that thing at the front? Is that a goat? It's a yeah, goat. goat. What is that? Look at the it's goat. a goat. It's like a doggy looking goat. It's well, cute. I'm going to tell us it's a little goat. Now, also, we have Steamboat Willy World, which is a terrible name for a company. They're making a, they're going to be running a Kickstarter for playing cards. Okay. This, I think, is better. That looks right? better. I mean, I, it yeah. certainly looks way better. But yeah. That's a cute 
Art I, style. I really it looks like something. Like that. It's interesting, though. You notice in the background, they are not showing you anything that's not like that's not a face card. Right, right, yeah. Oh, and yeah. are all the cards going to be black and white? Because you cannot play cards if they're all the same color, I think. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, because you're also only seeing hearts, right? Those are hearts. They already should be I'm red. I'm assuming, so. though... Yeah, well, Mickey's the king. She's the queen. But I also see a... There's a joker. The joker parrot. And then I see Pete underneath there. Right. And po oh, he's, he's a, a jack. jack. Yeah, he's a jack. You're right. We're, we're doing all kinds of mess. Wow. That's interesting. Like, where's but the? All why don't I show the one suit? Well, whatever. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about other stuff. It's not Mickey. Aww. Divine Right. This is a new edition. This game originally was published from TSR in 1979. Oh, that's before Steamboat Willie came out. <laughs> Uh, and this is coming from Worthington Publishing. Uh, they they have a Euro game branch called Pungo Games. I don't know what that means. Pungo, punk with p pa 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 pa. Yes. Or da 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 da. Like I don't know if it means they're puns or when I hear pung, pungo, I think pungent. Pung. But anyway, hmm. this says Divine Right combines combat, diplomacy, and role playing into two to six hours of fast paced action. That's an oxymoron if you've ever heard one. Six hours of fast pace. That is. But they're going to say, as age like a fine wine. Yeah, because I see it played all the time. But anyway, Divine Right keeps the 1970s look at the original while updating the component quality to the highest in the gaming industry. The highest? Oof. Ooh. Again, some of these statements, people really yeah. need to be careful with their copy because that's not going to be true. You're not updating this to the highest quality available across the board gaming industry. So let's take a look at Divine Right on Board Game Geek, 1979. Let's go. It's ranked 4,329, which is not high. That's actually, actually, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's okay. not too low. Maybe this game is far. <laughs> uh, I'm showing you the map here. It's a hex map. Oh, Ooh, you can give Did someone you not a see the map? Grasp no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know we were looking at the computer. What? Why? No. Oh well, no, this was 79. That was fine back yes, then. No, well, this is this is 2024. I, I would have been about Steamboat. Really. You know, I would have played this. No. Back in the, yeah, when I was a kid, I would have been. I would have thought this was the coolest looking thing ever. The bees need. Really? Wait, this already launched on Kickstarter? Did we miss this? It's live right now. Uh, we'll be talking about this oh. coming week. Well, we'll talk about it then. Oh, We're look, done it's now. Not doing it's doing bad. all right. It, yeah, it's doing it's okay fun, on well Kickstarter, funded, though. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, maybe I need to okay, get on this right. divine right. Nope. Uh, ride. All right, well, you need the Shuppa. Pungo. Uh, hey. Anyway, the next game is called Shuppa oh, it's or like Shuppa. Candyland. Now, like. the designer of this, Adrian Dainu, the last game he designed is Northgard Uncharted Lands. So this yes. looks very different than that. He's done very few games, actually. He's done North that, that one, the Northlands game. And there might have been another game in there, but then you have to jump back quite a bit in time because he did that one game called Moai. Oh, really? Forever ago. Which was like a, this really mean Euro game. Um, and this, now the Shupa game. This cover almost looks generated. Yeah, it looks a little weird. It does, yeah. I can't. Anyway, just you're revealing it cards. It's simultaneously busy but bland. Yeah. You know? You're getting a hand of seven number cards that come in four colors and two action Shub. cards. You need cards laid out in a row. You'll reveal them. You're choosing and revealing a card, and it looks like you're. It looks like maybe a little auction style with the cards. I don't know. We'll what about see the candy? What about the candy? Now you're just trying to win candy in the game cards. Now you want to see a good-looking candy game. Look at this next yes, one, please. called Rolling in Wonderland. So, <laughs> I think that box looks really cool. Now this is another mm -hmm. Alice in Wonderland type game. Rolling this is also Wonderland. coming to crowdfunding later on, and you will stumble in that Wonderland and meet all the famous characters. She kind of looks like Paper Mario. Like she's yeah, very flat, you're right? right. I will tell you, if there's one theme I am way, way over, it is. Alice in Wonderland stuff. Really? I'm so over. Like, it's the Cheshire Cat again. I know the Mad Hatter. <laughs> I'm like, so over that theme. And they put it in every There's other boy way game. way less than that. Yeah. The of Cthulhu. Oh, absolutely. But I just, I don't For, like this yeah, one as much. Yeah, it's just one that you yeah. don't resonate with. I like it. This, yeah. looks, this looks fun. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. 
All right. Next we have House of a Thousand Corpses. Let's go. We talked about we the, oh, crowd surfing and yeah. crowd surfing. That's what it was. House of a Thousand Corpses. This is, uh, well, it's coming out in quarter four of this year. Okay. Um, I made the mistake, because we were talking about this in the studio, I made the mistake of hunting down and watching part you of this did. movie. What? Hey, with well, your kids? No. Oh. And I was out, like, it's the same plot as Chainsaw Massacre. You're watching this for the plot? <laughs> <laughs> That might have been your first mistake. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't like any of it. Is this cooperative? I feel uh, like we said it was. Well, when we were on the Kickstarter, we talked about it being cooperative. Yeah. yeah, you're playing as the the bad guys, you know, trying to... The killers or yeah, whatever. Yeah, the killers. Yeah, this is interesting. This is, of, of all the uh, themed trick-or-treat studios games that have come out recently, based on some uh, intellectual property, I've never seen this movie, but this is one I'm, I'm interested in trying the game. Yeah. Hey, that's cool. All right, Knights of the Round Table. This is coming from Crafty Games. And Crafty doesn't make too many board games, yeah. actually. The designer is Johnny Pack. So that's interesting. Oh. You're going to be, each game that you play, you're going to pick a cycle of Arthurian myth to play, which sets the tone and starting rules. Okay, cool. And then you're going to deploy these different knights to construct Camelot, repel invader hordes, and quest for the Holy Grail. Um, you unlock different narratives and modules until you find the grail, and then the winner is crowned High King. Dozens of silk screen wood pieces, a huge game board, a 3D castle that you build during gameplay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything it's saying is like, yeah. Yeah. I usually like Johnny Pack um, you know, we, as a developer more, but yeah. You know, we talk about overused themes. It's weird to me that there's not more themes on the Knights of the Round Table. Yeah, there's not that many. Mm hmm. And it's like, that's Especially way public you, domain. You can totally drop Alice in Wonderland in the middle of that, too. You're good. It's also a great cover. That I like that guy at the top walking into the grail image. I don't like oh, the two. Uh, yeah, I don't like yeah. the two parts. I really like the top. I think the, the bottom part's okay, but the two just don't go together well for no, me. No, I, I like I, it. I don't Tom, like I'm with it. you. That's a good looking image. Mm. I think the title breaks them up okay. Maybe that's the problem. I, I, I don't know. I, I, why, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't like it. I think I it like looks them great. individually, but not together. All right, Rebel Princess. This is a trick-taking game that uh, oh, was already game. released, but it's uh, at Essen, and it's coming to uh, English-speaking countries from Bezier Games. I have not played as of you, and I'm Mike has. Yes, we played a little bit of it. That's right. Did um, you like it? Yeah, it's based on a uh, traditional trick-taking card game. I forget which Hearts, one right now. it says. Okay, so it's based on hearts. Oh, with special powers? With special powers, right. Um, very attractive, very well illustrated, you know, good-looking little card game. But it is, it feels traditional mm -hmm. with a little spice on top of that. Absolutely something that many people can, can play. And I'm glad to see it get a wider distribution. All right, in the category of who asked for this, <laughs> um, CGE is publishing Little Alchemists. So if you ever were playing Alchemist oh. and said, man, I wish my kids could play this, well, now you have a version of that coming out. Um, now, part of this is because the designer of the game became a father in the 10 years since he's designed this. So, yes, this is That's the 10th anniversary. Cool, okay. A stepping stone for it? It's interesting you say a stepping stone for it. And I think Alchemist hasn't aged particularly well. Okay, interesting. Because it was when it came out, we're like, oh my word, it was one of the first games ever to use an app, and it did so in a pretty decent way. Yes. And it was like, ooh, deduction, using an app, that's fantastic. And then there was this worker placement game that actually was bigger than the deduction part, and so I was like, it's good. I like the deduction part the best, but there's also worker placement, fine. Now there's so many games out there that do deduction with apps and stuff like that, that I would never play Alchemist. I would just play any one of the other ones. Interesting. Like the Search for Planet X or something. Yeah. All those games do that better. I mean, I still give props to Alchemist because they kind of brought that app to the thing. It's just I don't know that I go back and play it. Yeah, I never did play this one, but I heard it was a pretty long game, too. Yeah, it's like a full Euro with deduction elements in it. Maybe Little Alchemists is is my version of Alchemist. Then I don't know. I was wondering. I about do that. wonder how young it'll trend. You know, it's going to be at Gen Con, so we'll find out there. Um, and it says seven and up. Okay, that's cool. So maybe still has enough depth in the gameplay. 
to feel well, like I'm the original. Play. Yeah, Actually, I'm going to try yeah, it out. Sure. I think it'll be fun to play with you know my my son and stuff. But I don't. I, the only thing is, I don't think of them like, oh, you like that? Now let's play Alchemist. I'll be like, oh, you like that? Let's play Search for Planet X. Sure. That's no, but even myself, like I'd be like, oh, let's start with Little Alchemist, and then yeah. I'll go. You know, I can see myself starting. I, I want to play the new one. Yeah, yeah like I want to play Bot Factory, and then go learn Kanban AV. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. And obviously, this is not the same, but like, yeah, the same feeling. All right, Cosmos has a new game coming out called mm. The Gang, as Germany continues their rush to find the most generic names for games. Um, this is the cooperative poker game. Not the first, because that would be Surfacers oh. Max. Um, but it's, it's from the brands. And the brands said they think it will get the Spielsjahres nomination. This is from the... The brands? What brands? do you mean by that? Um, uh, it's from uh, Inca and Marcus brand. Or no, maybe they didn't design it. Maybe they said that about it. Sorry, oh, the designers okay, are yeah. John, John w. Cooper, Cooper and Corey Heath. Corey Heath. The yeah. brands played it and said they think it will get the Spielsjahres. Oh, okay, got it, got okay, it. Okay, interesting. That well, makes Corey more sense. Heath is the designer of Zendo, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. And a few other things, but... And John Cooper's the guy who jumped out of the plane with all the yeah, money. Yeah, D.B. Yeah, D.B. Cooper. He goes by John, but <laughs> his real name's D.B. Cooper. Um, yeah, this looks boring, but I'm sure it's an interesting game. <laughs> hey, if the brands like it, I, I'm in. They know what's up. All right, Caesar and Cleopatra is coming back. This, this is a piece of news I was not expected to hear anytime soon. Really, I figured they were going to redo all of them. Yeah. The whole line. This is, this so this is from the lower. Cosmos two-player line, which a lot of people know. Lost Cities is the most famous game for that line. Oh. Balloon Cup, and a lot of those games were reprinted. The most popular two being Lost Cities, which was reprinted straight, and then um, uh, which one was reprinted as? Um, Thunder and Lightning. Hair and Zeus. Hair and Zeus was reprinted as Thunder and Lightning. Yes. Anyway, it's a great series. This one is being reprinted from Cosmos themselves, although this rendering makes it look bigger. I'm assuming it's still going to be in that. I, I it's assume it's still box. a small square box, yeah. Mm. I like Caesar and Cleopatra. I didn't play it very often with people because... <laughs> <laughs> there are some Why? <laughs> Why did you play? Was there some sort of Why? objectionable card in yeah, it? There was an objectionable card. It was like, well, this is what Romans did. I was like, great, but I'm trying to play this game with my wife. <laughs> you know? I'm out of it, okay? I don't yeah, know. I will tell I'll you later. later. I don't want to, like, this is a family friendly show. But I, the oh. card itself was just a mechanism. Yes. And so I would assume that that's not it. I think it's out. It blew my mind when I first opened the box. I was like, wait, You're what's like, this game oh, about? Wow. Um, the artwork is fully worked, uh, reworked, and the original game I do not think was a looker by any stretch of the imagination. No. Uh, and so this looks much more modern. Yeah. Hopefully it is, yeah, it's a nicely reworked, maybe slightly updated version of the game. I'm interested. I'm interested. It's been a long time since I played the original game. I don't remember being blown away by it. I don't think I was blown I away by it. Either, but it was a nice back and forth yeah. area control where you're trying to control different groups of people in the middle. Hmm. Yeah. All right, continue on from Cosmos. We have Monkey Fun. Monkey Fun? That's uh, claim a connected oh. area as quickly with your gang of monkeys. Oh That's my cute. goodness, all the monkeys. I do like that cover a lot. What's up with that monkey right there? Then we have from Friedman Freeze, we have Fishing. Because um, all the game starts with F. Now this, oh, it's actually in America. It's going to be called fishing. Uh. Um, so yeah. So this one's a trick-taking game, I believe. Yeah, eight rounds. And you can upgrade the deck of cards while you're playing the game. So after a hand, some new cards will make their way in to the deck you're playing with. So take some of the ideas that he's put in his little fast-forward series, and implements them into a game that isn't that linear. It I sounds like interesting. Sort of thing. Yeah, it sounds interesting. He tends to do... I tend to like his small card games more than his big games, actually. And this, I think, is supposed to be a small I thought you one. didn't like the Fast Forward series that much. I don't like him very much. No, I liked one of them, I think. Okay, but... I really like him. When I think of his games, I tend to like the smaller ones more than the big ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. they go, he, he goes very mechanical when it's big. And it gets a little more dry. His small ones uh, are a little more interesting to me. All right, a, a cool cover here. 
Babylon. This is coming from Geek Attitude Games. Oh, wow. Wow, that's... That cover's really neat. Um, what is that board? That's a really board unique board. The board is cool looking. I, I, I worry looking at that board that the game is really basic really and simple. Really abstract also. Um, yeah. We Maybe. play that game Skylines or Sky... I forget. I asked Mike the, yesterday. The one that Sky had... Skyrise? That had the little towers that connected the... And you were building oh, no. paths from tower to tower. No, that's something else. No, yeah, skyline was... maybe. It reminds me a little bit of that. I mean, again, it's work in progress, so maybe the whole thing looks better and cooler. Um, this is a two to four player game, and you are digging the quarry for the best materials, and then using them to build your three dimensional gardens. And Cloud hmm. City says Mike. Yes, yeah, Cloud City. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know, but if this is your own thing that you have in front of you, and each person has their own, that's kind of really Ooh. cool. So table hog. It looks really neat though, and I love that cover. Yeah, it is a I great really cover. I really like that a lot. That looks cool. All right. So there's a new game that's been sort of announced here called Black Forest. This is coming from Fjordland Spiel, and they're saying it's a successor to Glass Road from Uwe Rosenberg. But this is not Uwe Rosenberg. This is from uh, Tido Lorenz. He worked with Rosenberg on the Fields of Arl expansion. Oh, okay. I love that. It sounds like we're talking about famous, you know, scientists. Well, he was in the room when they discovered the formula. So, yeah. This looks way bigger than Glass Road. Glass Road is not that big of a game compared to Uwe's other games. I'm kind of excited about this, even though it's not a Rosenberg game. It 100% looks like one. Um, is that like a Rondell there? or a Yeah. The, Rosenberg in a lot of his games uses those... It, it's a way to keep track of how many resources you have of each thing. And you move them around. That's the way it's been in okay. several games, including Glass Road. Mm. You'd love it. I don't love Glass Road. I think Glass Road is okay. But maybe more... I, I like Rosenberg's big games, usually. So. Huh. It's been a while since I played a Rosenberg big game. Hey, we're back to Freedom and Freeze. Hello. Mm. He made a game called Free Ride, and now Free Ride USA is coming out. And you can tell it's the USA because it says USA on it. But also you can see, if you look well in the window of that train, that dude's eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a fatty. Okay. That would be great if there's All like right. a big fat guy in those trees <laughs> eating a whole pizza. A burger. Would that be funny? Come on now. You I know. would laugh. Oh, that'd be great. Anyway, um, uh, this is a spinoff. I have not, actually. It's a spinoff that has the same gameplay as Free Ride. So, you're building roots and decks and a bunch of different things. I saw a picture of the map. It looked pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and one of Friedman Fries' most famous games does have a map with connections, right? I mean, Power Grid kind of yeah. looks like a train game. It's not a train game. It kind of looks like one, so... I'm interested in this one. This is a, I'm assuming, a little bit of a bigger game that I am interested in from Friedman Freeze. All right. Check Games is coming out. I'm very excited about this one. SETI. Uh, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Very interesting. This is from Tomas Holek. Now, this is interesting because it almost looks like they're doing a similar, very similar theme to the one that is coming out from Bezier. But it, is it Bezier Games, I think? He was, oh, which the, one? Yeah. the search for ETI, I oh, think, or whatever was not yeah, UFO. Yeah, not UFO. Yeah, not, UFO's yeah. out. Now we have a new abbreviation. Whatever for that, the new yeah. UFO. All right. So yeah. this looks this looks good. I, I like CG games generally. Mm -hmm. um, or they they they're like, I think CG pushes the bounds more than most companies. They they'll say, oh, let's try this new thing, and sometimes it doesn't work for me. Like that deal with the devil did not work right. for me, but they definitely tried. They do try right. weird stuff. Weird they, and unique. Yeah, they were so. they were putting out the app games a long time ago. They tried the app, you know, Frontier. Yeah, they do try weird stuff, and I do uh, applaud that. This looks very cool, and I love that theme. This Who's reminds me. This look makes designer? me think of Search for Planet X. A little bit. It's kind of what it looks like a bit, but it, it the board's got some spinning action on it. It looks like its own thing, and I really uh, I'm intrigued by it. All right. So the designer is Tomas Holek, and the only game other game he's designed is his Galileo Galilei, which oh, I'm excited about, yeah, but, but we, we haven't got yet. Yeah. Okay. So 
Okay, that's I thought his name sounded familiar. Pink Troubadour. Yeah, because that hasn't delivered yet, has it? Very nice. I don't think I don't so. I believe so. Not seen it uh, you're investing that's in cool. equipment to analyze stuff that comes in. There's 200 cards in the game, and every card is unique. Yeah, I feel like there's wow. a lot more going on than what we're seeing here in this picture, right? I mean, this is yeah. just the... I think this is their big game that's coming out at Essen. Okay. So, I am excited that's for this cool. one. I'm yeah. normally not excited for CG releases. This one is talking to me. Great yeah, yeah. cover. Oh, so such a good. good. Cover. Man, we're gonna have a hard time at the end of this year doing that vote on best covers. It's gonna be an interesting. Yeah, I love that. I like that one a lot. All right, let's reel in your bus covers now. Back to bus and stop. Oh, Tokyo that's, Game Market that's is that's happening. Cute. Well, next week actually, or well, eleven days or something like that. Anyway, this is a new game from Sashi and Sashi, and um, you need to be efficient bus drivers. They love buses over there. I love their, their art style. All their games have the same illustrator. They always yeah. have this sort of timeless look. You can't quite tell when this when their games are set. So the opposite, I think they all Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you yeah, can't tell like where. is this from nineteen fifties, supposed to be like local people from nineteen fifties or Or twenties. Nineteen twenties or yeah. I could see that, yeah. So I like that clean look to it all. Very stylized. And I it tend to very like stylized, their games. Yeah. So I'm excited for this one. This will be generally released in June, but you'll be able to pre-order it in May. All right. Dying Message. Now, this is, has 50 copies coming out at the... At, oh, no, this came out... What? Sorry, last year with only 50 copies in December oh. 23. But Oink is now going to be publishing this game. And in it, you've been murdered. Hmm. But you're not quite dead. Um, that's not how what? being murdered I don't know. works. That's no, no, you know... Like you're actively bleeding out. Yeah. And so you are trying to point, use these cards yeah. to right. give people clues Write a message as in to your what. Oh, so it's what like that one scene it. from the. Many uh, movies. Yeah. What's, like that, almost. what's that famous novel that they made into a movie uh, with Tom Hanks? The Dan. Oh, the Da Vinci Code? Yeah. It's like that one scene in The Da Vinci Code. The yeah. beginning of that movie, the guy's like, Bleh. Let me draw you some. Let me write out a whole paragraph. <laughs> to whom it may concern. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny if it did to whom it may concern and then die. Like, ah, ah, come on! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, if the clues are easy to understand, they'll be destroyed by the culprit. If they're difficult, they won't be communicated to anyone. So your culprit, I guess, will mess up part of it. Um, okay. This is the exact same premise as another party game, which I forget the name of, that had a big Where's Waldo map. Uh huh. And there was one, like you would pick someone who killed you. And then you would do the same thing. You'd write clues, but the person who killed you would be erasing some of your clues. Oh, <laughs> love that. interesting. Yeah, so you have, a big, that? you have this big grid, what? and the, let's say the, the... Oh, wait, is that the yellow game from yellow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, I played like that. Like you can even draw a picture, but if it's too obvious, then you just erase it. So I would draw the picture that would cover four squares, but they might erase yeah. two of them. And it's it's a pretty it's interesting okay. game. Yeah, it's okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. This seems a little bit seems almost the exact same style, but more streamlined as an Oink game is going to be. Small little game. Huh. Oink is also making cool. Zuli. And um, wait, is this Oink? Because it definitely looks like yeah, it Oink. looks like Oink, but hmm. I don't know. Now I'm wondering, it might not be Oink. Nope, it's publishing brand Unfringed. But that looks oh, so much like an Oink game. It does, wow. yeah, yeah. Designer Chris Priscott. This was crowdfunded in 2021. Um, oh, it's Moving Wild, I guess is the name of it. Okay. It's based on Zuli, sorry. So that top left cover is what That's it used the to be. One. The middle one is what it is now. Mm. So you're making enclosures, putting animals in them, and you have to get special things. Three rounds, most points wins. It looks real kitty. It is an oink release, says Mike. Okay. okay. Oh, I see. It was originally unfringed. And oink now it's oink. Oh, it's the last two or four okay. okay. oink picked okay. up. Okay. <clears throat> then we have a new game from Toshiki Sato. Who designed a game called Happy City? Now he has Merchants of the Sky Islands, and it's one of those ones where that cover and that game feel like they're two different wow. things. Wow, that game yeah, board, board is, is that board is the scoring board is straight up Carcassonne. 
Oh, yeah, you're right. Ooh. That is Carcassonne. Is it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You about to get sued. Yeah, it looks just like a Carcassonne board. Um, well, you know what? It might play that way because they're putting tiles out and connecting know, things. And making it, yeah. It says you, on your turn, add a tile from your hand to the table. Matching land and sky. Gain the appropriate resource or victory points based on the color of the airship on the tile you place. Well, there's differences there. Okay, but okay, what about the farmers? <laughs> Do you lay down the farmers? How do the farmers score? <laughs> All right. That looks cute. Let's go back to cool covers here with Rebirth. Um, Rebirth is coming from Mighty Boards, and it is a Reiner Knizia tiling game. Oh, Where's Mike? Yeah. Where's Mike Delisio? He's popping in oh. the chat now. This is a brand new Knizia, too, from what I understand. A new tiling oh. game. Okay. Like, not based on anything, not based, like okay. anything known, I well, suppose. Well, right. Uh, and I had not seen anything past the cover, so there's a little tantalizing image there. It it's looks set nice. in the future. The lush and hopeful future. It's also been described as a bit of a cozy game, which is interesting because oh, that seems to be okay. the new push. So that's a little hmm. bit of what I saw online. It's like, yeah, it's kind of a cozy rebuilding game from Knizia. And I'm like, okay. Interesting. Okay. The it looks like there's a Zeppelin the in the background. <laughs> Mike says the Reiner songs continue. The Reiner. Oh, wow. How many Renaissances can you have? You got the trick taking Renaissance. That's the thing. This is a Reiner songs. That's and different. now the Reiner songs? Different. All right, Brazilian publisher Paper Games started a small line of micro games from Kinesia. You know who does our news, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, in 2023, <laughs> the top three came out, and then the yep. new ones are coming out here. And they, well, actually, they came out in December and January. Cool. So we have Glyphos, that's a one to five memory game, and Glitches, a card placement game that's similar to. Robo Master from Cocktail Games, and Procurados, a two six player game in which you test your bounty hunting skills to find the right rats that are running wild in the West. Wild West rats, got it. It's the wild, wild rats. Wild, wild rats. I did play, That's funny. Mike has these top three because, of course, he does. Uh -huh. uh, oh, there he is. He's shouting it. Z play Duo Ragna. <laughs> oh, my hey, gosh. people shout in chat, Roy. We need to uh, yeah. put them in timeout. No all caps. Uh, anyway, anyway, I played that one with Mike, and it was okay for. It was all right for what it is, which is an incredibly small micro game. They're not kidding; these are tiny little things. Oh, okay. So, are they all trick taking? No, no, no. Mm. The one I played wasn't a trick taking game, mm. and none of these sound like trick taking games. But anyway, yeah, it's like a line of Knizia games. They're all his, I think, and they're all tiny, which is crazy to me. That he's still coming out with this many tiny games. Like, right. Yeah. It's insane. Now, obviously, they're going to have some similarities to some of his other games because when you've made 400 games or whatever, yeah. Right. But the one I've played was all right. But we're not done with Canizia news. Hit him wow. with more Canizia. What? So there's a new version of At the Office, which we actually have here at, at the office. Um... I haven't played the game because I don't think it has English rules in it. Plus, it looks like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, it's a roll and write game. So the Polish company is reprinting it as Ingsoc 1984. Oh, it's the same game? Yeah. Oh. oh, that one looks way better. In the first one, you were trying to become boss of the year. Here, you are trying to... What's in the office? I don't think ...organize I've seen new recruits for a political party. There's a little game back there. How big is it? I don't know. I've not even seen it. Okay. Anyway, huh. so the uh, the publisher's words here, make a good team or you will be vaporized. The great brother <laughs> watches you. Oh, I like that. That's pretty cool. More Canadia. All right, that's, that's enough wow. for the Reiner songs. They're bringing back Fitz. Let's go. Fitz is great. Fitz is okay. No, Fitz is good. Fitz is fine. You like Fitz best. better or Bits better? <laughs> is it Tetris? Sucks. It looks like Tetris. Okay, Fitz is you better than Bits. Bits sucked? Fitz is better than Bits. Yeah, I agree, but I don't think Bits sucks. I don't know. This is a Tetris style game from okay, Reiner Canizia, so um, which is fine. But it, they're reprinting it. They really are huh. reprinting a lot of Canizias because they just reprinted uh, or announced uh, that other one that now has a flower theme and you connect lines through it. 
I don't know. Which they, they, they've reprinted. Which they're, one? They're, I forgot what it's called originally. I used to have the original printing. They're just reprinting all his stuff. It kind of is a Reiner Sons. Wow. And I kind of hate oh, Mike for that. Oh, wow. This it, is... Got in your head. See, there are two different versions. The top one's a Chinese version, and the bottom one's the Korean one, which looks... Way, Way better. better. Oh, like it's not I even see. close yeah, there. No. Yeah, Butterfly Garden, which was not Rondo. It was um, something else, Middle Eastern or Indian or something like that. Huh. Good news. We're done with Canizia. Aww. All right. There's an expansion coming out yes. for Earth called Abundance. Yeah, but the expansion was designed by Canizia. <laughs> it was no. not. We will be playing this expansion. It's coming Tuesday, so yeah. join us. As we play Earth yeah. with Abundance. Yeah, Indigo was the yeah, original. Yeah, exciting. Okay. I'm excited about that. Speaking of expansions, we have Carnival Chaos, an expansion for Thunder Road. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that one. And just basically, it's it's the Mario Kart Arena, mm -hmm. except uh, a lot more death. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Kart Arena, okay. Then Dominion continues making second editions of everything, so they made one of Cornucopia and Guilds. I'm assuming together. Right? Two things by this: one that they're that Dominion used to make small box expansions. They stopped. I think these might be the last two. So now oh, they're okay. combining them in big boxes, and also it really feels like they're pretending Alchemy never happened. They they haven't reprinted. That, they have right? not done a second edition of Alchemy. Yeah, that's out. So, and if you don't, if you just want the new cards, you'll you can buy them separately. Okay. I bought, I just bought one of these boxes. It just comes with all the new stuff. And that's fine. Cool, cool. All right. Oh, I lied. Oh. We're back to Kenichi again. Psych! Oh. The Reiner songs continues. So there's a new expansion for Millie Fury, the masterpiece. <laughs> I'm allergic to Kenichi. So, um, this is well. So there's an expansion coming out for this. That's cool. But what's really interesting about this, and we didn't put a slide in here, um, but this is a coming from Devere, and they're doing a P500, or they're calling it Devere 500. Sure. So this has not. So do you know the you P500? Know what that is? No, I don't know what you're talking about. So games, uh, GMT, the war game company. This was before Kickstarter. They did something called the P500, which said we want to make this game. Uh huh. You need to pay us to make this game, or give us your credit card, and when we get 500 orders, then oh, we'll print okay. it. But we will then charge your credit. They don't. They didn't charge your credit cards until they got enough. Then one day you'd just be like, "Oh, my credit card was charged." Oh, so what it's happened? Kickstarter and all on Kickstarter. It, it was, was a pre-order system that wouldn't trip and trigger yeah, unless you until enough people hit a threshold. So the P500 okay. was like you'd sign up for a game, yeah. and eventually it could be years too. You could be like, "I'm interested in this," and then two years later. They got 500 and hit print. They, they still it. do okay, it. Interesting. They still do it, yeah. And and not only that, it might not even be 500. They might be like, all right, let's see if we can get to 1,000. Ah, we're at 1,200. That's good enough. Let's print it. And then they print it and print a whole bunch of extras and sell the extras. Okay, interesting. So that's what Devere is doing with this. So at this time, it says there's 454 reservations. I bet. I bet. Uh, I can't pull it up. I bet by now it's over. I bet it's over 500. So the Devere 500 page, this is the only project on it right now. Yep, 518. Okay. So it's going to happen now for 24 bucks. I'm oh, curious cool. what made him choose to go this route. But hey, if it it's works, a that's safer cool. bet for an expansion, I will say. Yeah, but why do that say over Kickstarter? Devere has never a done a whole lot less work to like run a Kickstarter, to prep the Kickstarter, to watch the. I mean, if you that's run a Kickstarter, fair. the office, I mean, I think we like shut down for that month almost. You know, I mean, not obviously we're still doing videos and that kind of stuff, but it's like nothing else, all hands on deck. So for a company that's putting into that, monitoring the chat, coming up, chat, coming up the graphics, coming up, and if you do that too, you're gonna have to have stretch goals. Maybe they don't want stretch goals. It's like, this is the expansion we have. We're ready. Yeah. Just help us print. So I think, I think for... it's much better decision. They know the game. They know what they have. They just need kind of this enough interest to actually have the faith to hit the print button. I think there's a much smarter way. Yeah. I think for an expansion, this is the way to go, actually. Absolutely, I agree. Speaking of expansions, there's a new expansion coming for Gaia Project called The Lost Fleet. Or is that a Pure truck? Land. That looks straight up like a truck. <laughs> it does. Well, that's why I got lost. Because <laughs> it's in space and it should be on the highway somewhere. And you'll be oh, able to cool. see the rulebook online. It's coming in quarter three, so Essen. All right. 
Asmodee has a little game called Star Wars Bounty Hunters. Um, this is a kind of a... Um, you're picking a card on different piles, and you're going to play or sell a card, and you pass your hand. So there's a drafting game involved here. 20 minutes. Short little game. Hmm. It's from their new Zygomatic Studio, which is their light little games. I wonder if this is based on something. You know, I went and looked at it because I thought so too, but I can't find that it is. Okay. Richard, I, I have the same thought as Richard here. I was like, it kind of looks like Unmatched. Just looking at that that um, cover real quick, I immediately thought Unmatched. This cover? The cover, yeah. Oh. With the little the Star I also Wars thought up Unmatched the top. when I first saw the cover until yeah, I saw it this. Until you actually see the stuff <laughs> yeah, down yeah, yeah. there. It was like, oh, is this an Unmatched? Oh, no, it's not. But then that interesting, would be full circle if they did that. But then interesting color choice going like pastel for a Star Wars game. I think it's, it's, it looks unique in a very, not overdone, but in a prolific theme. All right. We have a lot of thumbs down today. All right, anyway, Risafa. This is coming from Vladimir Suki uh, from Delicious Games. This is their Essen game that they're coming out with. Ooh. And that looks like the very definition of a Euro-style game. Uh, oh, my little, word. This one looks a little more interesting to me than his science fiction game evacuation did last year. Oh, and really? I like science fiction more than I like these kinds of themes, but this one looks a little better to me. I like the layout of that board. Oh, okay. I'm liking what's going on. Anyway, here. you are going to the city Risafa, which has no water. Oof. So they had to bring water in, and water tanks and canals to bring the water in. And so that's kind of the whole point of this, is getting water to the city. All right. Wow. All right, Dino... Um, which is a company that people haven't heard of too much. Last year, they published a game called Aldebaran Duel, which was from well, from Suki. Okay. I, I reviewed it. It was okay. Okay. Uh, but they have a new League of Six. Like they're bringing back League they of Six? They are bringing back League of Six. Wow. Those are not great covers. That's also bad. But still better than the first oh, really? League of Six cover. Are they, are they dwarves? <laughs> or just... Short. Well, actually, no. All joking aside, in the Middle Ages, people were shorter because of well, lack yeah. of calcium and other things. It well, just it's evolution. I mean, people are getting taller. That's awesome. Yeah, Tom, you're living in the future, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Whew, there's a lot of news. We're almost done, folks. All right. I'm excited about this next cover. Don't starve the board game. So this is based. This is, cool. yeah. this this is, is based really cool. on a Steam game that I had not heard of. It's from Glass Cannon, by the way. I went and looked at this game, and then I was tempted to go play the game. It's one of those go around and collect resources and get better and survive. Mm -hmm. uh, a cozy game, except that there's like monsters no, no, everywhere. No, it's definitely not a cozy game. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know what you call those, right? Survive, like it's a, it's it's survival a rogue game. Like yeah. survival game. Yeah. Is Minecraft then survival or cozy? You can play. There's a there's a mode for survival. Yeah, and it's called survival. Oh, yeah, good no. point. <laughs> anyway, no, it this is. is I've played this. It's a it's a very cool, very stylized little game. You try to survive. Obviously, that's the idea. And eventually, you die and then start another run. It's very very popular. Oh, it's just, roguelike. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um. I also like so Glass really, Cannon. I'm really excited for this one just because I really like the look. I like the game. It's not one I'm like over the moon about, the video game. But I've played it and I'm, I, I've enjoyed it. And I love the look. Yeah. It's funny because I'm not interested in this partially because one of my least favorite mechanisms in any game is feed your people. Yeah. And that's the game. The game of it, yeah. So, alrighty. And then we have, <laughs> this cracks me up. So a game called Nature. This is from Nature. Dominic Crapuchets from North Star Games. It is in the vein of their evolution games. It's an evolution of evolution. They actually use that term. Um, so I don't know exactly what. It just cracks me up because when a game is called Nature, that means we are completely running out of nature games <laughs> names. I mean, it's all we also have like Earth, though. I mean, I think we're. I think I didn't you're think seeing, Earth was a great name either. We're, we're seeing that trend to go just like one word kind of. Sure. Um, all encompassing. Ah, it is. It's titles. A dull name, but that's a cool cover. Nice color. Palette, they're fading the colors. I like that a yeah, lot. Interesting again with the pastels. Interesting color choices. Yeah. And it's gonna have. Here's the thing, though. This game's gonna have five modules. 
Jurassic Ooh. Flight, Natural Disasters, Arctic, Arctic Tundra, and Amazon Rainforest. And you can use zero to three of them in a game to modify the length and complexity. Interesting. Huh. So, like, if you add one to the game, the game's 60 minutes. And he says it's the same complexity as Evolution. Okay. If you add two, it's 90 minutes, and it's the same as Climate. I haven't played Climate. Uh -uh. Have you? Yes. Is it more complex than Evolution? Yeah, slightly. And then he says you add three, you get 120 minutes. That's roughly the complexity of Terraforming Mars. And I want to point out that evolution and terraforming Mars is a pretty wide barrier yes, between right, us. Right, so. right, right. Huh. We'll okay, see. Okay, that's a cool yeah. idea. I like that idea. I'm yeah. very interested. And then our last piece of news, and the only news you should care about, DC Heroes uh, United has been announced. <laughs> ah! Nobody, really. I mean, because we all assumed this was coming. Oh, yeah. But still, I'm excited. Of course, they are not saying if it's compatible with Marvel. But we'll just assume I don't think it they is. Can they will not say, say that. that. Right? Yes, yeah. I believe they they can't. Because we I, saw that with the uh, the zombicide ones as well. Sure, sure. You know, they can't they, really they, say yeah. these things. Um, but it's one of the few times I like doing anachronistic stuff, like with superheroes. Like, how would Superman fare against Apocalypse? Oh yeah, I like that sort oh, of thing. Yeah. That's or cool. Yeah, Peter yeah. Parker against the Joker. That sort of thing is interesting yeah. to me. I don't yeah. have a problem with crossing those streams. Um, if it's DC and Marvel and whatever, like, like superhero stuff. It's all fantasy anyway. Yeah, like, you I don't know. have a problem yeah. with that. It's also not fantasy, by the way. Shut your mouth, okay? Superheroes are important and serious. All right. <laughs> okay. They definitely didn't fool around with the heroes they put in the main box, as Mike points out, though. They got like, Superman, yeah. Batman, Wonder Woman. We Which know why is you're nice here. to see, though, instead of, like, sprinkled out throughout, so then you have that... I have to get everything. I don't want everything. I can't store everything. Fine, I get nothing. I want you know, to call what I... They're going to have a Green Lantern box. Yes. They're going to have an Arkham box for sure. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, I mean, because Batman's villains itself. They it's just, just too did, big. Yeah, they they're going to do a sinister, DC Batman. I'm assuming they're doing like yeah. a Sinister Six type box with Arkham oh. type guys. I am surprised they didn't do just kind of like the Spider Geddon, just like you were saying, do like an Arkham or just a they, Batman box. They will box, do you know, that like as an add-on, probably. Yeah. Just that, They'll do yeah. a Flash box. I don't know about that one. Teen okay. Titans? Yeah, that's a good call. Teen Titans, um, Constantine, and the... Is that like Dark? Yeah, dark, the Magic DC, people. Dark, whatever. I think they might okay. save that for like the future. Like you'll see the... The DC, uh, whatever, what's the universe where everything went bad, where Superman killed the Joker? Um, I've been just reading it, uh, anyway. It's a, mm. it's a great series. Oh, Mike says Aquaman box. Yeah, I disagree with Mike on that one. Mike uh, says Aquaman box, I'm like, nah. He says because of the movies, I don't think so. I think Aquaman will be in the game, but uh, list, some, be, yeah. list some Aquaman stuff besides Aquaman. Just yeah. Fish, 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 fish. Yeah. I know Black Manta and... Well, Pete Sherry's in the comments. Be careful of besmirching fish. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I think I would agree with Pete. I would love Suicide Squad box. Yeah. And I yeah. want King Shark. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. right. yeah, and you yeah. better come with a little Actually, button. Actually, the Suicide Squad, Squad, Suicide Squad box would be at the top of my list as things they will do. Maybe right below an obvious group of Batman. Villains. Unless they would save it for the second wave of Maybe. this. Maybe. The point being, all our speculation here, at least I am speculating because I'm really excited about this. I love this game. Injustice. And I, yeah, like the little bit of a glimpse we've gotten of this, I'm like, yes, I'm in, 100%. Mm -hmm. And this one's starting at the level we are at with Marvel United. Meaning, in the core box, you have equipment. Oh, they already you said have, that? Yeah, well, you can see it. It's right like, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. The point being that we're not regressing to where Marvel United started. Right. Very basic characters, very basic villains. You're starting a little more developed. Right. We're starting yeah. at where we are right now. I like that. Yeah. Well, Batman has to have equipment or else he's... What else has he got? Well, he's a rich cat. You know what I mean? He throws uh, money at the Joker. Ah. I'm a millionaire philanthropist. <laughs> All right. That is, folks... The longest news we've done in a long time. Let's keep going.